scientists who know something about the problem of, of mercury amalgams and to those who do not know that much about some of the dangers associated with that or believe there is none. The European Commission state, stated in its 2008 notification that there is, this is a quote, there is no scientific evidence that any of the elements currently used in dental amalgam restorations constitute a risk of, out, of adverse health effects in individuals apart from allergic reactions to the individual elements. And the reason that that is not a true statement is because of the overwhelming amount of scientific data published in conventional literature to the contrary. So when we look at risk issues for the dentist, it's important to understand that you as a dentist are at risk for mercury poisoning. Why do I say this? Because of these facts, and I'll reference these, metallic mercury vapors or organic mercury may affect many different areas of the brain and their associated functions resulting in a variety of symptoms, including personality changes, tremors, visual changes, hearing loss, muscle incoordination, loss of sensation, difficulties with memory, and animals exposed to long-term levels of methylmercury or phenylmercury. And laboratory studies also experience kidney, stomach, and large intestine damage, changes in blood pressure and heart rate, which have been shown also in limited human studies, and adverse effects on the developing fetus, for men, sperm and the male reproductive organs have been adversely affected by mercury exposure, increasing the number of spontaneous abortions and stillbirths for women and babies. Where does that radical information come from? It comes from the United States Department of Health and Human Services. It was published from the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, and it was published in 1999. We are now well beyond that point in time and we are still clinging desperately to the belief that mercury is of no toxicity to the human body. When we look at these different studies, we can also see the following, that there are, in addition, information published that says the following. Joachim Mutter from the Department of Environmental Integrative Medicine and his colleagues in Konstanz, Germany have shown that autopsy studies have shown that many individuals with amalgams have toxic levels of mercury in their brains or kidneys. Well, you say, well, that's for patients who are getting the mercury, but you're putting the mercury in that person. That the half-life of mercury in the brain can last from several years to decades, as opposed to what was stated in the European Commission, which says that it lasts maybe up to 90 days. The autopsy studies don't show that. They say, they, they say that it lasts for many decades. Out of 40 studies that were rigorously reviewed and evaluated for consistency and veracity, 32 out of those 40 studies testing memory in individuals exposed to inorganic, inorganic mercury found significant mercury deficits. And what I want to emphasize is that mercury, when it enters your body from vapor, does not stay in the form of elemental mercury or inorganic mercury. It converts easily between the three forms of mercury, elemental, inorganic, and methylmercury. And that happens in human tissues. It lodges in human tissues. It does not stay in the blood or the urine. It stays in the tissue and in the central nervous system. It passes easily into the central nervous system from these sources. Also, case control studies have shown tremors, impaired cognitive skills, and sleep disturbance in workers with exposure to mercury vapor even at very low concentrations. And these are referenced in conventional literature. Dentists were found to score significantly worse than a comparable con control group on neurobehavioral tests of motor speed, visual scanning, and visual motor coordination. Also in concentration, verbal, menu, verbal, verbal memory, visual memory, and emotional and mood tests. There are nine or ten different scientific references published in conventional literature on this. What I want to bring to you is the fact that there are many studies. Here's one that was from the Journal of Dental Research. This is a mainstream dental journal entitled Intraoral Mercury Released from Dental Amalgams. It is concluded that intraoral air is a reliable physiological ind indicator of mercury released from dental amalgams 
that may reflect a major source of chronic mercury exposure. Dentists are being exposed to the same vapors. Again, from the Journal of Dental Research, it is concluded that the process of removing amalgam fillings can have a considerable impact on mercury levels in biological fluids, and that after removal, those levels will improve. Also, from the Journal of Dental Research, nine out of 10 subjects studied in this small study exhibited a, stati a statistically significant decrease in blood mercury after removal of amalgams. Salivary antioxidant activity is blunted. That is published in, 19, in the year 2000. And here's a, an important study that I just want to close with. It's from the Federation of American Societies for Experimental Biology. That's called FACEB. It was published in April of 1995. And I'll read this to you. The collective results of numerous research investigations over the past decade. This is now, how old is that? It's you know, 15 years old, 16 years old. The collective results of numerous research investigations over the past decade clearly demonstrate that the continuous release of elemental mercury from dental amalgam tooth fillings provides the major contribution to mercury body burden. The experimental evidence indicates that amalgam mercury has the potential to induce cell or organ pathophysiology. At the very least, the traditional dental paradigm that amalgam is a chemically stable tooth restorative material and that the release of mercury from this material is insignificant is without foundation, without foundation. We have to look at countries like Sweden, Germany, Denmark, Canada that are outlawing or making it illegal to use dental amalgams. We have to look at the current administration's re request for a worldwide reduction and ban on mercury. We have to look at all the scientific data, not just the data that's been published in this country, but the world literature. We have to dig in and look at what is probably the most single toxic element that is used in dental work today, mercury, and eliminate it once and forever from people that we're here to serve.